Hello beautiful lady. Welcome to another episode at True Healing, the place to be to balance your hormones naturally and create the babies and lives you love. I'm Dr. Disha, your root cause doctor. I'm a gynecologist and founder of truehealing.com, creator of Sheeto method. And day 3 today is all about getting to know phases of your menstrual cycle. So let's get ahead and get started. The reason I want you to learn about your menstrual cycle is because we are led to believe that our cycles are completely mysterious and unpredictable when in fact they are not unpredictable at all. They are actually quite predictable even if they are irregular. We are taught to believe that we have absolutely no control over how painful, uh, how irregular or how problematic our periods are. When in fact we actually do have control we are also led to think that our periods show up whenever they want to and there's absolutely no way of knowing exactly when they are coming and this is so not true even if your cycles are irregular uh apart from that many women still think that they can get pregnant anytime which is also not true you can't just get pregnant anytime any day Uh, in fact there is only certain parts of your menstrual cycle when you can get pregnant and that's one of the reasons that we are learning this because i want all of you to be aware of how your body works so to keep it simple uh let's break down your menstrual cycle into two parts into two cycles the changes which happen in the uterus which is called the uterine cycle and the changes that occur Uh, at the level of the ovary which is called ovarian cycle so let me tell you some fun facts uh, see vagina is naturally acidic and which keeps it healthy and keeps the right kind of bacterial environment in the vagina but this acidity also does something else very interesting this acidity of vagina makes it impossible for sperm to survive in the vagina literally impossible do you know sperms die within a matter of hours in the vagina because it is so acidic so we'll learn more about that later and uh, one more important thing if you use hormonal contraception or birth control pills keep in mind that you do not experience a true menstrual cycle and uh, natural hormone fluctuations are not going to happen if you are on these pills the kind of bleeding which you get on these pills is a withdrawal bleeding that is just when you stop taking the hormone it's a withdrawal bleeding but there are no fluctuations happening you do not get the period advantage which you get when your body is naturally producing a period so let's talk about the menstrual cycle now a uh, menstrual cycle is not just a 3 to 5 day period happening below your waist uh, do you know it's a it's around 28 to 35 day conversation happening between your brain and the ovary and we all know about the menstrual phase when the bleeding happens but do you know there are three other phases of the menstrual cycle the follicular phase ovulation phase and the luteal phase So let's get started with the first phase which is menstruation which is also known as your period and everyone knows about this phase okay so the first day of your period makes the beginning of the menstrual cycle not the end i know for many of us it's like oh finally everything is over i got my period but that's actually just the very beginning of a series of incredible events that happened throughout your cycle Menstruation is a part of uterine cycle and uh, menstruation is when the lining of the uterus sheds and that happens when a pregnancy does not occur during the previous menstrual cycle. Your menstruation or menstrual phase typically lasts for 5 to 7 days, 3 to 5 to 7 days although I do not like 3 days period it could be a sign of hormone imbalance but it's it's going to vary based on a number of factors. The general rule of thumb menstruation lasts for 5 to 7 days for a period. 
After menstrual phase comes the follicular phase and uh, as the name suggests follicular phase deals with the follicle. You remember follicle which is the sac which contain a tiny immature egg. Follicular phase is the part of the ovarian cycle which includes changes that occur in the ovaries during the menstrual cycle. Follicular phase is dominated by hormone estrogen and we learned last time that estrogen creates changes in the cervix. Uh, the length of follicular phase varies from cycle to cycle and it can be very sensitive. The follicular phase can be very sensitive to external factors. You know, things like uh, your diet, stress, the kind of exercise you're doing or not doing, sleep, it is good or not good and other stressors that that you know which happen in life you know when life happens they are all going to have an effect on the length of the follicular phase for those of us who have a PCOS history or um, very irregular cycle this is the phase that you can blame for that and this is the phase of the cycle where when the life can really vary but for those who have a regular cycle, uh, follicular phase can vary, uh, can be a few weeks, maybe two to three weeks. So in follicular phase, three important events are happening. Pituitary gland located in the brain makes FSH. FSH acts on the follicle, which makes follicle makes estrogen and estrogen changes the cervix. Now, estrogen changes the cervix, so the bigger the follicle gets, the more estrogen they make and then this estrogen that's made by the follicles triggers changes in the cervix. Cervix, I hope you remember, is the lower part of the uterus and this estrogen triggers the cervix to produce a very special sperm-friendly fluid called cervical fluid. Remember I spoke about uh, how the vaginal environment is very acidic and kills sperm within a matter of hours. So sperms cannot survive in the vaginal environment. The only reason the sperm can survive in the female reproductive tract is because of this special fluid called cervical fluid. So cervical fluid is generally thick and like a paste kind of thing or a glue kind of thing when estrogen is low or when the follicle is making a smaller amount of estrogen. But when the follicle starts growing and producing more estrogen, cervical fluid becomes very clear and slippery, similar to the uh, texture of raw egg white. When estrogen is high and when these follicles are more developed, they are releasing more estrogen. And the most important thing to note is that, that this slippery cervical fluid, raw egg white consistency can keep sperm alive in the female reproductive tract for up to five days and I'm sure you have heard that sperm can live in the female body for up to five days and that's where it comes from. So sperm can only survive in the female reproductive tract when cervical fluid is present and when this healthy slippery uh, cervical fluid is present which is the most sperm friendly type of cervical fluid. The slippery cervical fluid is produced only when the follicles are getting really big and really strong and when they are about to ovulate. Remember, no cervical fluid means no sperm means no pregnancy and that's a really important thing to understand. So after follicular phase comes the ovulation phase. So ovulation is the release of a mature egg from one of the ovaries and to be more specific it's the release of mature egg from one of the follicles. Okay, So ovulation can happen anywhere from 9 to 25 days after the first day of the period if you have a regular cycle. But if you don't have a regular cycle for um, some of us with a history of PCOS or amenorrhea you might go months between the first day of your period and ovulation. So that's where the variability in your cycle sets in. 
and ovulation is triggered by a sudden increase in LH, luteinizing hormone, which I hope you remember is made by the pituitary gland in the brain. So in summary, what happens during ovulation is first a follicle's estrogen crosses a certain threshold. In response to that, pituitary gland releases LH or luteinizing hormone. And thirdly, the follicle releases its egg. So after ovulation phase comes the luteal phase and uh, which is the last phase of the menstrual cycle. So luteal phase is actually a part of ovarian cycle where the changes predominantly occur in the ovaries but also in the in the uterus. So luteal phase is actually the time between ovulation and the first day of your next period. And typically it lasts between 11 to 16 days, even if your cycles are irregular. So remember earlier I mentioned that the follicular phase is the phase that has all of that variability. So if you have PCOS, follicular phase is to blame. Uh, it's not your luteal phase. Okay. So once ovulation occurs, even if your cycles are irregular, even if you have PCOS, if your body does manage to ovulate, then you are going to have your period between 11 to 16 days. And that's not going to change. And uh, next thing is, luteal phase is dominated by sex hormone progesterone. And progesterone is the hormone that actually um, prepares the uterus lining for a potential pregnancy. So, summary of what happens in luteal phases, uh, number one, the empty follicle becomes corpus luteum, number two, the corpus luteum makes progesterone, number three, progesterone affects the body and uterus lining, and number four, the corpus luteum dies. So what changes progesterone causes in the body? Um, First of all, it uh, progesterone thickens the lining of the uterus. Uh, secondly, it dries up the cervical fluid. Then it prevents another ovulation and it also heats up the body. So remember I said that egg would die within 24 hours after ovulation if it's not fertilized by a sperm. So if the egg is not fertilized, Corpus luteum will die after 11 to 16 days. Or if even if the egg was fertilized, but for some reason it was not able to successfully implant itself on the wall of the uterus, uh, which is where it would have uh, grown and been housed during pregnancy, the corpus luteum again will die after 11 to 16 days. And obviously if corpus luteum dies, it cannot make progesterone anymore. So if the corpus luteum dies, progesterone's level come down, uterine lining breaks down and which means you start your period. So again you go into your menstrual phase or the period starts. So I know we have covered a ton of information in this session and you should be super proud of everything that you have just learnt because that's more than most people will ever understand about their menstrual cycle and I'm hoping to change that all. So take very good care of yourself till I see you next time.